Hi, this is Tom Chamo again from the Palmer's Direct to You Market, Palmer Food Service in Rochester, New York. And today we're going to butterfly a lobster tail. So, real quickly, just get a quick wash of your hands. Alright, and we'll get started. Just like to identify some of the lobsters and the types of products that are out there right now for you today, especially during the holidays. Lobster seems to be on everybody's mind and will undoubtedly be on a lot of people's plate this holiday season. To start off with the smallest things available, these are called langostinos. It's a variety of lobster. It's very small. It's very delicate in flavor, very buttery and sweet. It's essentially uh, the equivalent of a saltwater crayfish. Very good to eat, simple to prepare. This is in its raw state and it sautés very nicely with butter and garlic and serves well over pasta or in like a cream sauce for a Newburg. The second one is uh, a little nicer as well. This one gets a little smaller. This is essentially a baby lobster tail. This is a langus. This is a, uh, uh, a baby Icelandic lobster dainty is what this is. It's basically the same type of physical makeup as a regular lobster tail, just a lot smaller. These are frozen. They thaw very quickly overnight in the refrigerator is best. And the best way to cook these is either roasted in the oven uh, for a short period of time, about eight minutes or so, or put them right on the grill and uh, close the lid and it'll cook in about four or five minutes right on the grill for you. You don't even have to turn them over. The next one we have to shoot here is the Australian lobster tail. The Australian lobster tail is also known as a cold water lobster tail. Uh, it's a very delicious lobster variety. It's the spiny lobster. Uh, they don't have any claws. They, they have spines and uh, it's a very sweet and flavorful meat. They come in a variety of sizes. This is about a 5 ounce tail. This is uh, the same variety in about a 12 to 14 ounce tail. Uh, there's no difference in the texture after they've been cooked, just differences in sizes. That's all there is to it. Um, this one is the same thing in size. This is a 12 to 14 ounce warm water tail. Uh, some say warm water tails aren't as sweet. I think that they're a delicious terrific item to have. There's nothing at all wrong with these comparatively. It's a very flavorful lobster uh, and very satisfactory uh, if you're broiling it or baking it in the oven. I choose not to boil them. I tend to roast them in a high temperature oven and we'll do that real quickly before we we close out. And lastly of course you can't harvest the tail off of a live one. Uh, most people choose to cook these in the old-fashioned traditional way of either uh, steaming them in a pot of water or grilling them. Um, both of them are very effective methods of cooking it. I would probably cook this before I harvested the tail off and the two claws, but this can also be a nice product for your holiday meal. Uh, it's very simple to prepare, and in the next video we'll show you a couple methods on how to prepare whole live lobsters. So, today however, we're going to go right to the, the tails and show you two methods of preparation for butterflying a lobster tail. We thaw these overnight in the refrigerator, 24 hours, keeps them nice and cold, keeps it nice and safe. You just want to take it out of the packages that it comes in. Okay. Very good. And we'll just set one off to the side for now. Now the first method which is typically the culinary arts method that they'll teach you in school. Uh, definitely the way a lot of the restaurant chefs do it and uh, some way that's very simple to follow. What I do is I follow the spine of the lobster down to where the tail meets the last section of shell. I put my knife handle or point there and go right down and hold it onto the table. And with the heel of my hand I'll hold down the tail and push forward on the shell just to crack through the shell itself not all the way through the lobster then pull the knife forward a little bit just to lacerate the meat itself but not cut the whole tail in half so it's still in its whole shape now if you look underneath these ribs need to be cracked and this can be done very easily by just pushing upwards a little bit and folding it out with your thumbs as you do that you'll find that the meat releases very easily from the tail and you want to pull that meat all the way out of the shell until you reach the tip of the tail and stop. Okay, then you fold this 
shell empty back together and put the meat right on top of it like that and it will open up nice and wide and look just lovely just like that. Then you're going to place it onto a sheeting pan or a sizzling platter, fan the tail out and get that ready to prepare. The second method you can choose, the alternative method, is scissors. This is a very effective method and very safe if you're not accustomed to handling a large chef knife but you simply put the scissors right underneath the shell above the meat, crack it all the way down to the edge, and then the same thing. Press underneath with your fingers and pry the top of the shell open. Once it's open, you pull it out with your thumb to the very end, but without letting it release from the shell. Close that empty shell up, plop the meat on top, and once again, fan it out and we have our butterflied lobster tail with scissors very easily done. Next we want to just take a little bit of red wine, or excuse me, white wine. I pour the wine all over the top, it puts a little flavor onto the lobster meat itself and this little bit of extra wine in here allows it so that the tail doesn't crisp up or burn up in the oven when we're, uh, when we're roasting it. Next I want to take a lemon, of course, cut that in half, simply squeeze the whole lemon right over the top Again, you want to get a lot of lemon flavor in there, so I go ahead and drop that right on the sizzle platter after I'm done. And then usually take just a scooch of paprika, just to add a little bit of color on there. This one is a seasoned paprika. It's a little salt and a little pepper and a little paprika. And that's just going to help encourage some of the browning in the oven. We take this unit right here, we'll pop it right into the oven on the middle rack. Set your timer for about 8 to 10 minutes. The temperature of the oven should be preheated at about 450 degrees. And that's all there is to it, folks. It's as simple as can be. So I hope you enjoy your holiday. I hope you enjoy preparing your lobster tails at home. And want to thank you for paying attention to my video. My name is Tom Shimon with Palmer Foods. Palmer's direct to you market, Rochester, New York. Let's get cooking.